spot. But yeah, exactly. So the idea is to do everything within the shipping container. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Um, I'm Marina. I'm going to host this webinar. The webinar is called Public Policy and Environmental Issues. We will be talking more specifically about plastic because CP3 is about plastic. But um, yeah, so this uh, webinar is brought to you by CP3, in which I'm the project coordinator, and also by the PSSA, in which I'm the VP Academics. Um, I would also like to say that we are having many events on Concordia since it's Sustainability Month, and right now it's more specifically Zero Waste Week. We will post some events that are going to happen still. I'm going to ask Mabel to do that so you guys can join. It's going to be really fun. So far, it's been really fun. Um, some disclaimers. Um, there is a reference page at the end if you guys want to check it out, check my sources out, also because it's important to, to always uh, reference your sources. And also, um, this is going to be more of a... Um, let's say superficial <laughs> conversations, more an introduction. So it's, uh, we won't go too deep, very introductory. So maybe if you're, you're already, in, already in political science, you're gonna know everything that I'm talking about. Let's see, either way, you're welcome. And right now I'm gonna pass the word to Mava so she can do the land acknowledgement and present to Petrie. Thank you, Marina. Um, hi everyone, my name is Mava. I'm the communications coordinator at CP3. So before jumping into the nitty gritty of the webinar, I'll start off with a land acknowledgement. So we would like to begin by acknowledging that Concordia University is located on unceded indigenous lands. The Kenyan Kehaga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters on which we gather today. Jojage or Montreal is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations, and today it is home to a diverse population of indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with Indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. So I'll now talk a little bit about our project. So for those who don't know us, um, we're CP3. So our name stands for the Concordia Precious Plastic Project. And our mission is to address the plastic crisis by repurposing Concordia University's plastic waste for the communities of Montreal. And we also wanted to repurpose it into new recycled items as well. Um, our goal is in alignment with the Concordia Sustainability Action Plan. And it is also in alignment with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, um, namely number 12 and 13. Uh, CP3 also follows the Precious Plastic Methodology, which is an open source plastic recycling project. Um, here on the next slide, um, so we can see that we have our renovated uh, shipped container to house all of our machinery. That is a project that is still ongoing. We're still waiting for it to be processed, but currently we have a temporary lab space located in the Great Nuns buildings. Uh, thanks to Arian Weeks from Sucker, who is here today, uh, who provided it to us. Um, but in the future, when we'll have our renovated container, um, the student center will be a space to work on projects, but also gain a better understanding about plastic and find better alternatives to repurpose plastic waste. And this is all made possible thanks to our sponsors and their contribution for the workspace and equipment. So if ever you're interested in learning about CP3 and uh, keep track of our activities, um, you can follow us on social media for updates at CP3 Concordia, or you can also send us an email. Uh, we also offer opportunities and resources to be involved. Um, at CP3, you choose any role that interests you, so you don't feel like you have to know everything about the position to register. Uh, mentor and coordinate, well, mentor slash coordinator will be paired up with you to help you out. So you can sign up for the link that Marina will put in the chat. And with that, I'll now pass it on to uh, Marina, who will be introducing the PSSA. I'm sorry the link didn't work, so I'm going to ask Meva to, to redo that. <laughs> so the PSSA is the Political Science Student Association, which I'm the VP Academic of. There are many exacts in this meeting right now with me. Uh, the PSSA is a student association for any students in a major, minor, honors in political science, as well as the ones in minor in human rights. We are here to help. We host events. Uh, by the way, there is a, we're gonna have a debate 
Um, not a debate, but a question and answer event with the municipal um, candidates this Thursday. So I'm gonna post our a link that has our Instagram, our Facebook, our website, our events, and all of that. And you guys can feel free, even if you're not political science, you're free to come to any of our events. You're gonna be more than welcome. Um, and so we're gonna start the webinar now. Um, first of all, the table of contents. We're gonna start with a little rundown of what is public policy after all, and why does it matter in the, in the plastic contacts and the crisis context, and what are the possible approaches that scholars have been talking about and that governments have adopted so far. And then we're gonna have a Q&A session. Um, so let's start with public policy. Public policy is basically a tool of government to solve problems. It's, it's very simple. It can be a law, it can be um, an initiative. This is gonna be more clear when I talk about the, the policy cycle. So I can explain the policy cycle with the example of recycling in Montreal. So it all starts with the agenda setting, which means a problem was identified and something needs to be done about it. So we can think about the, in the case of recycling in Montreal, we can think of how plastic waste was out of control and then the population and the government realized that something had to be done about it. And then, okay, that's the agenda setting, our problem is the plastic waste is out of control. Then they formulate a plan for it. So they formulated that Montreal is gonna start recycling. So we're gonna have recycling plants, we're gonna have pickup trucks, we're gonna have um, information about it. So they formulated the plan and then it is adopted. Everyone accepts it, the, the government says yes, the, the, the people that work for the government say, says yes. And then the plan is adopted. Okay, so we are going to recycle plastic in Montreal. And then comes the implementation. And that's when we, the population, start seeing the trucks coming by once a week. Um, and then we can request our recycling bins that are gonna go in front of our house. Um, and then we start seeing perhaps even plants around Montreal or getting that job. It depends on how you are. Um, so it's implemented, we start seeing it. So something is happening. And then comes a very important part of the public cycle that is evaluation. So is this working? And in the case of recycling, that is a very important one because no, it is not working uh, because very little of the, of the plastic we put to recycle is actually recycled, less than 10%. And as a matter of fact, most of it is downcycled. We can see that in the documentary, The Story of Plastic. It's gonna be in the references if you guys wanna watch it later. Um, that most of it is downcycled, which means that it loses the quality of the plastic. So it's not as good as that, the way it was produced the first time, which means that it can't be recycled forever, which doesn't solve the problem. Um, so in the evaluation, we see that no, recycling is not solving the plastic waste problem. Um, and so comes support and maintenance. So something needs to change or something, I don't know, maybe we need to educate people more. Maybe we need to change our strategies. Something needs to be done because it's not happening. And right now we can think of the, the plastic ban. So it came back to agenda setting, right? Okay, we still have the same problem. We're recycling a little bit, but also plastic production is going up. So the problem has not been solved. So Montreal has now come up with the, the plastic bank, for instance, that would be a support and maintenance to the recycling program. So that's a policy cycle that can be with anything, with economic problems, with uh, environmental problems, like we're talking here, with the uh, problems of discrimination, anything can be, can, it's gonna pass through this cycle. And sometimes you're gonna see the cycle in a different matter, but it all comes down to problem was identified, a plan is drafted, an evaluation is made, and then it all goes back to the center. Um, why does it matter in the plastic crisis? As I said right now, um, most of our plastic is not recycled, and we all know that plastic is everywhere right now. It is in the oceans, it is in um, the animals, it, is, it has been found in the human placenta, uh, which is horrifying. Uh, it has been found in animals, uh, 
everywhere, basically. It is estimated to be in places that humans have not reached, like deep uh, ocean waters. So it is an issue because it doesn't go away and it's, it's trash. It doesn't, it doesn't blend with the environment. It's not like throwing fruit out that becomes dirt again. It's, it's a strange body in the environment. So this matters in the, the public policy because we as individuals do not have the power to stop this. Maybe I'm sure some of you guys maybe live a zero waste life or try to avoid plastic and kudos to you, I do as well. But ultimately we are one people in an ocean of plastic. So we need something bigger to stop this from happening because it's us against huge corporations that make millions of dollars every day. So we really don't have that much power to stop this completely. We do, however, have the power in a democracy to complain and to vote correctly. So I will urge you to think about that in the provision elections and in the municipal elections. Voting is important because these are the people that are going to come up with a public policy that it maybe can help environmental issues. Um, stop. I think stop is very utopian, but let's be dreamers here. I hope you guys are dreaming with me that we can stop this crisis from happening. Um, and so what are the possible approaches? So these approaches are to environmental issues at large, but here we're talking about plastics more specifically. CP3 is about recycling plastic. Um, the first one that I wanna talk about is regulation. So regulation is very straightforward. It is about control. It is about stopping something from happening. It has a very defined goal. So in a regulation, we will stop something from happening. So the example that I'm giving here is a plastic ban in Montreal. So this means that single use plastic will not be produced anymore. It's something very clear cut. And it also entitles that there will need to be policing. So someone will need to check if that is happening, if anyone is doing that, because it, it, it does entitle controlled. So something needs to stop here. And that's how we're going to do it. There is a regulation. Sometimes there are fees to pay. There has to be policing. And there is a very clear goal. Plastic needs to stop being produced. Um, which is different from the second one that I want to talk about, that is market-based approaches. Although they are efficient, they don't have a clear goal. And that is because um, basically market-based approaches are um, an incentive with the capital. So it's making things expensive, so we don't want to purchase it or companies don't want to purchase it. A very clear example of that is paying for grocery bags, um, the plastic ones. Um, it gives you less of an incentive to get a plastic bag and to remember your own bag, your, your reusable bag, because a plastic bag is such a useless item that you're gonna use it once that is ugly and that it's just gonna be thrown in the trash. So even if it's five cents, it does play with our, with our mind that why am I paying for such a useless thing? Is this five, 10 cents? Personally, I do feel that way. I don't want to pay 10 cents for something that is literal trash that is going to go to my house and be thrown in the trash and pollute the environment in the process. So market-based approaches have that idea of making something expensive, even if it's 10 cents, of making something costly so people don't feel incentivized to use it or companies don't feel incentivized to use it. In market-based approaches, there are no goals because it doesn't mean that people are going to stop buying. It's just an incentive for people not to buy it. But it, it, it doesn't really, it can't really stop people from buying. So maybe it won't do anything. Um, it's usually, it, it is effective, but ultimately it doesn't mean that it will be effective. Um, and then we have the third approach that is the most loose one, that is a voluntary and echo labels. So voluntary, we can think of the companies like we can think of Adidas making recycled plastic um, shoes or clothes or anything that they sell. So the, the consumer would feel compelled to buy because they care about environmental issues, but it, it's voluntary. The government's not asking them to do that. They, it's, they are just expecting they are going to get a reward from the consumer, but there's no control, there's no regulation, and even less goals. It's just like the company decided to do that. 
Similarly, it can be on an individual level. So I put the example of recycling labels. If we have recycling labels, we can decide to recycle or not. Or if we have, I don't know, we can think of a public policy that is gonna um, think of information of eco labels. So, oh, let's put posters in the Metro. Let's give information in schools. That doesn't mean that people are going to recycle or stop using plastic. It's just information is being spread. There's no clear goal. There's no strong incentive. It's really just appealing for the good of people or in the case of uh, companies so they can still have the, the environmentalists buying their thing. Um, and now I have the references here. If you guys want to screenshot, I do recommend watching the story of plastic because I think it really fits into what was said here. Um, and now we can go on to the Q and A if you guys have any questions. This, this was a very fast webinar, but that was the idea. <laughs>